the inertia, the, the set that we, we calculate the inertia about this base, so we'll take it up to the true uh, uh, neutral axis here, 283 square. So 128 e to the third times 283 squared, 10.3 e to the ninth, and that's uh, a negative value. So now if we add up all these all these values here, we're going to get 3.96 uh, e to the ninth. Okay. And that is the gross inertia of the section. And we can go one step further. We'll need this for um, determining I effective, and I effective is what's used to determine deflections. We base deflections on I effective. So we'll need the moment cracked. And so remember from MY over I theorem, uh, the moment crack, it's an unknown. Y is the distance from here to where the cracking fibers are, which is here. So that's 283 millimeters divided by I, which is uh, 3.96, we just calculated it, is equal to the the stress that just uh, puts the uh, the maximum stress of the, of the masonry fibers in tension. And that's in a table in the code, and it comes up to be uh, 0 0.85. <coughs> so we'll rearrange uh, and find moment cracking. It's going to be 3.96 e to the ninth times 0.85 divided by 283. Oops, 283. And then divided by 1,000 squared. Okay, so that comes out to be 11.9 kilonewton meters. So today we're going to calculate the uh, cracked inertia for this uh, masonry lintel. But before uh, we begin this one, let's uh, just go back a few minutes for that I gross calculation. I noticed that I did something incorrect. When I added these numbers up for the gross inertia, it should have came out to be 4.02, not 3.96. And then that carries on to the cracked moment crack calculation. It's not 11.9, it's 12.1. So that was an error that I made when I was using the calculator. Uh, now, in this example, uh, to calculate I crack, the first thing we have to do is uh, calculate the the, the uh, neutral axis location, which is going to be uh, somewhere here, let's say. And that's uh, C. The distance from here to here is C. And we'll use static moments uh, for that. So the, equ the equation would be uh, 190, the width times uh, C and then the distance from this centroid to the neutral axis location which is C over 2 C squared over 2 and then the area of the uh, s compression steel transformed is 4500 times uh, this distance from the area of steel to the centroid which is C minus 60 And that's equal to the area of steel below the neutral axis. Times uh, this distance D, which is 590 minus 60. So that's 530. The distance from here to here is 530 minus uh, C to give us this distance here, minus C. So to 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 uh, solve for C, we I have just a solve function in my calculator, 
and I'll just input the equation in. Okay, so now I have it uh, in the calculator, and all I have to do is just solve. C is going to equal 189.8 nine five millimeters. So that's this distance from here to here, 189.95. And now we can calculate the uh, inertia, the cracked inertia. So let's start, let's take inertias about the centroid. There's no parallax theorem needed really for this one. It'd be just as fast using, taking, st taking inertias about this axis. Uh, so we have 112, the base, times the height, one eight, which is C, uh, 189.95 cubed, plus the AD squared component. And the D squared is going to be from C over 2, which is much room here. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, four thirty four. times 10 to the 6 and then the uh, area of the steel is 4500 times its distance squared which is 189 minus 60 squared Steel eleven thousand eight hundred this distance here, which is uh, five thirty minus C. C is one eighty nine square. to do is uh, sum these values and we'll have the uh, eye cracked. And that's in millimeters to the fourth. Um, so that's really all you have to do is to solve for the uh, eye crack. And then in, now in the next uh, tutorial we're going to take the, the gross inertia and the cracked inertia and use uh, an averaging technique to come up, come up with an effective inertia. The effective inertia will be used to uh, calculate the deflection on the beam. And the uh, deflections will, will use the live load and then uh, any creep adjustment creep shrinkage adjustments uh, due to any sustained loads, which is well, obviously the dead load is the sustained load. And you'll see that that uh, deflection will be uh, quite high, the sustained portion of dead load. And uh, we'll talk all about that and wrap it up in the next uh, tutorial.